Hey everybody, Q Paul here. Welcome to the channel. In the past few months, I've been inundated with questions from our Patreon members about Mexican RFCs. For you folks who are unfamiliar with the term RFC, the short answer is that it is an alphanumeric tax identifier that would be the equivalent of a social security number in the States. I'll explain more as the video goes on. Well, due to some legislative and rule changes in Mexico, it is becoming increasingly more difficult to get things done in Mexico if you have not yet applied for and obtained your RFC. And this goes for those folks who don't even file a tax return in Mexico. I'll give you some examples and these have all recently come from our Patreon members. Multiple members, all of which who have Mexican residency, report being completely unable to open a Mexican bank account in 2022 without an RFC. One of our members reported that a car dealer in the Riviera Maya would not even allow him to leave a deposit on a new car without providing an RFC in his name. Another member contacted me yesterday to ask about RFCs because his Mexican internet provider contacted him to request his RFC in compliance with recent legislative changes. So in today's video, I'm going to be giving you more detailed information about RFCs and more importantly, I will be showing you how to get one. Pretty exciting stuff, huh? RFC is short for Registro Federal de Contribuyentes. And as I said in the intro, it's an alphanumeric tax identifier. When it is assigned to an individual, it is similar to a social security number in the states and when it is assigned to a business entity it is similar to a federal employer identification number in the states the rfc is important because it allows the mexican government to fiscally track people for tax purposes and helps them combat money laundering in order for an individual to get an rfc they must be a mexican citizen or a lawful resident when i say lawful resident i mean that they have either temporary or permanent residency status in mexico when you get residency in Mexico, you are not automatically assigned an RFC. You have to actually apply for it through Mexico's version of the IRS called SAT. I know some folks watching this may be like, Paul, I was issued an alphanumeric identifier number, something like that, when I got my residency. Yes, you were issued a different alphanumeric identifier. That's a population identifier, and that one is known as a CURP. Sometimes people mix up CURPs and RFCs. When Linda and I moved to Mexico in 2015, we didn't bother to get RFCs when we came down. We just really didn't see the need for it at the time. In fact, back then, the only expats that we knew who had an RFC assigned to them were those who were working in Mexico or had set up some kind of a Mexican corporation so they could buy land under that structure. So back then, when we opened a bank account, uh, we were asked if we had RFCs and we just said no. And the person setting up the account just kind of said, okay, and then moved on. It really was not a big deal. The same thing happened when we bought our cars in Mexico. We bought two different cars from different dealerships at different times. We hated our first car, so we, we got rid of that after like a year. That's a whole nother story. Well, the reason the car dealer specifically asked for RFCs um, for the new cars that we were buying is because the transaction when you buy that new car is actually recorded on an official tax receipt known as a factura. You may have heard that word before. The factura then serves as your car title in Mexico. It's even printed on security paper like a car title would be in the States. Well, facturas are electronically and immediately sent to SAT. Remember, SAT is Mexico's version of the IRS. Well, on the factura, there is a spot for the buyer's RFC. Like I said back then, we did not have RFCs, so just out of curiosity, I dug out my old paperwork to see uh, what the bank and the car dealers had actually written for an RFC on the documents. Um, the bank had used a generic RFC that is used whenever a foreigner doesn't have an RFC issued to them. And the car dealer, well, they just made up RFCs for us. I mean, they looked like what an RFC should look like, like combinations of our initials and our DOBs, but they weren't real RFCs. You know, that kind of sketchiness or clerical errors or whatever you want to call it, um, that sort of thing was pretty common when we first moved to Mexico, but it is not anymore. Things have definitely changed since Mexico's current president was elected, and that is President Andres Manuel López Obrador, more commonly known as AMLO. AMLO is easier to say. Well, since he's taken over, the government has enacted legislation that creates more control, tracking, and oversight over financial transactions in the country. They also created fines for non-compliance of the rules and for those folks who are issuing 
facturas without all the required information in them. That's right, no more made up RFCs. One of the most significant legislative changes, you may have heard something about it, uh, that started this year is that every person 18 years of age or older has to have an RFC in Mexico, even if they're not earning any income that is subject to taxation. Now, I mentioned that we did not have RFCs back in 2015. I ended up applying for them years later because I knew um, that we would be required to have RFCs to qualify for a capital gains exemption if we eventually sold our condo in Mexico. Well, we did sell it in 2021, and although we did have RFCs, we had permanent residency, and the condo had been our primary residence for six years, we almost didn't get it because my RFC did not appear on our electric bill. That's really what it came down to. Fortunately for us, the people buying our place were super awesome people, very understanding. They let us stretch out the process a little longer so we could get that RFC on the electric bill, and we eventually got all of our money. And if those folks are watching, thank you again. So now that I've covered why RFCs are important to have, let's talk about how you get one. Well, you used to be able to do it 100% online. That's when I did it. But those days are gone, so now you'll have to actually make an appointment and go in person to a SAT office. Uh, the reason is that they are now taking biometric data. They're taking photos of your face and your eyes, as well as your fingerprints as part of the process. Just a reminder, in order to apply for an RFC, you will need to be a citizen or have temporary or permanent residency. You will also need to have your CURP. Remember, that is the alphanumeric population identifier. Well, the first thing you want to do is go to the website citas.sat.gob.mx. This is how we are going to make our appointment. You're going to click right here where it says Registrar Cita. On this screen, you're going to have some options. This first option is for folks that already have an RFC and want to do something else with SAT. That's not you. Uh, the next one is for people who need to get an RFC for their business entity and that'll be under Personas Morales. And the third option is if you need an RFC for an individual, and that's under Personas Físicas. We're gonna click on that. As I said, you're gonna need your CURP. Now you can often find your CURP on your resident card. Sometimes it's not on there though. If it's not on there, you can look it up. I have a video on that. Um, you can go to another website, which is just the www.gob.mx backslash CURP and you can actually look it up with your personal data. That's usually what I do. That way I just copy it and I paste it in. So we put in the CURP, put your complete name here, then put in your email, confirm your email, accept the terms and conditions for use of cookies, and you're going to have to prove you're not a robot. I think I passed that one. Okay, you're gonna be taken to this screen where you're actually gonna do your scheduling. You see the clock up here, you only have five minutes to get this done. Come over here to the left under Servicios or Services. There are three options here. This is the part of the video that's actually changed. In the original version, I told people to click on the first option, which is just saying that you're enrolling in the RFC as a person. The second option is enrolling in the RFC as a person who's 18 years of age, but not 18 years of age or older. And the last one down here is going to be the enrollment of people with special cases or casos especiales. Throughout the majority of the SAT offices in Mexico, the first option's been just fine, but at some offices, particularly ones in Guadalajara, uh, if you chose the first option and you had to wait, and you finally got your appointment and went, they said, ah, you should have come as a special case so you need to go and reschedule. And it's important to remember that when we talk about Mexico, that things are going to be consistently inconsistent. So if you wanna play it safe, Casos Especiales, um, you can click on that down here at the bottom. Now, if you do that, you're going to get this notice that says, if you're an adult, you can select um, the service, which is just to sign up with the RFC as a physical person, which was option number one. And then you can schedule your appointment at any of their locations. Now this is contrary completely to what people are being told at certain SAT offices like the ones in Guadalajara. But again, you can't let these things frustrate you. That's just the way Mexico is. So for the purposes of this, I'm gonna go ahead and go with casos especiales or special cases. So I'm gonna close my warning. And the next option I'm gonna to go to is the federal entity I'm in, which is the state I'm in, or if I'm in Mexico City, that's also a federal entity. I'm gonna come down here to Quintana Roo. And for special cases, I have three locations I can go to. I'm gonna choose the Playa del Carmen one. 
And right now, there are no available appointments that I can schedule through this. So I'm going to be put into a virtual line, a fila virtual, which is fine. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And it's going to email you a token that you're going to stick in here. So I just paste in the token from the email. I confirm. So you'll get an email that says you're in the virtual line and that you will be notified with the date and time when there's some availability for an appointment. It also says don't come to our offices. You'll find this sort of thing a lot when you're trying to schedule online with different government offices. Um, sometimes it may take you months to get an appointment in one of these places. So we'll have to see how long this takes. And when you finally do get an appointment, you're going to be taking the standard things along with you passport, resident card, proof of address, and your CURP. One other item you need to bring along that's a little unusual is a thumb drive or flash drive. They're going to be putting some things on there for you. So don't forget that item. If you're wondering what this is going to cost you, it's nothing. There is no fee to get an RFC. Well, that's the end of the video. I hope you found it informative. And until next time, hasta luego.